If Satan wanted to defeat you, what would he do to you? What would you come up with? I remember a very well-known uh, pastor and preacher uh, was asked one time, uh, if the devil wanted to destroy you or uh, bring you down, what would he do? And this man gave an answer that, oh, it would never be in a certain area. Uh, it would never, he was above temptation in that area. And as he shared with me, it was the very area that uh, he was overcome and uh, uh, committed sin, had to be restored, and went through great pain uh, living through that trial. The question is asked, uh, the devil is out to get all of God's children. First Peter says he goes about as a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. What if you change that? Uh, Satan goes about seeking to destroy Phil Howard, uh, to destroy you, your name, put your name in there. And how would he do it? What can scare me on this side is, on one hand, I have no idea which trick, which scheme he would use, but we want to begin to look at some of his favorite methods of coming against God's children and seeking to defeat them. This word in verse 11 of Ephesians 6, 11, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. The word schemes is methods. And so he has a methodical way that he takes on God's people. Let's look at Genesis. Uh, everything's going fine for Adam and Eve, perfect environment, perfect uh, body, perfect mate, perfect wife, perfect man. Uh, everything is just right. And all of a sudden we have a voice that begins to doubt the Word of God. A, the, it's planted, has God said. Uh, the greatest and the frontal attack of Satan is to always question the Word of God to the believer question his promises, uh, question God's will for your life, question God's way of doing things, and you begin to doubt. And when doubts come, uh, the next thing that will come will be uh, a lie. You would, the devil will say, God won't do what he said. You won't die. Uh, who told you that? There's no consequences to sin. Become your own person. Become autonomous. You make the rules. You decide what's right and what's wrong. Who, who are you listening to? Don't let another voice tell you what's right and what's wrong. And so there's an outright lie, denial of consequences for disobeying God. Uh, go ahead and do it. Try it. it. It won't hurt you. It's fun. It brings pleasure. And that is the great deception of sin. It brings an ounce of pleasure and an eternity of woe. But the devil makes it his business to not let you know about the woe. He doesn't want you to know what it costs you to have that affair. He doesn't want you to know what it costs you to break up your home. He doesn't want you to know what it costs you to compromise truth for a lie anything. He denies consequences. And then in the midst of this, a favorite tactic is when the enemy comes against us, we become discouraged. And discouraged simply means we lose courage. Uh, the roar comes. Uh, the attack. The fear strikes us. And we, we don't know whether we want to run. We want to give in. We want to sell out. What is it? We've lost our courage. Uh, and what does he say to Joshua? Be strong and of good courage, Joshua. The giants are big, but the promises of God are bigger. Uh, the opposition's there, but I have promised you the land. Don't look at the size of the giants. Look at the size of your God. But when Satan comes against us, he can eclipse the image of God. 
for we're overwhelmed with doubt. We're into denial and we begin to lose our courage. And all of a sudden, we start blaming others for our problem. We blame an Eve, we blame an Adam. And so these favorite tactics, and in the middle of all of this is unbelief. I can't trust God anymore. I begin to distrust who I used to trust. So I've got doubt, I've got denial, uh, I've got discouragement, and now I've got distrust. Those four D's are from the devil. Why can't you trust God? Well, I don't know if he'll keep his word. Why are you doubting God? Who is the clay to tell the potter what to do? When did you figure out the universe? When did you figure out where creation came from? I thought we were people under the authority of the divine word. When you listen to the voice, the many voices coming from Satan and his demonic hordes, he will have you doubt God, be discouraged about God, deny what God has said, and you will live in distrust. When you don't live by faith, it's a miserable life. You're already defeated. You're defeated. And so you see believers drowning in doubt and fear because the enemy is successfully using his ancient methods of getting us to deny God's word, doubt God's word, distrust God's word, and then lose our courage to believe God. Oh, help us, God. Help us to overcome our doubts by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Be full of God's word. Be full of the voice of eternity, lest you yield to a lesser voice, a voice that seeks to damn us. We must heed to the voice that can keep us. Luther said, one single word from God is able to defeat and rout our enemy. Cling to that word above every other word. May God keep you this day.